What's happening guys? Welcome to this video. I am super excited to be launching a new product that I think you guys are going to find helpful and that is some project presets. They're going to be one click options where you just click on it, you load it up and your project's going to be all set up with your frame rates, your resolution, as well as a whole bunch of other project settings just to help you get going quicker. Because let's be honest, there's a lot of stuff in Resolve that you got to do when you're editing your videos. And if we can make presets, it'll just help speed up our workflow because I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to spend all day editing if I don't have to. Speed it up let's make it as quick as we can so i made these for myself and i found them helpful so i'm offering them to you guys there's going to be 24 different project presets at all the common frame rates that you might use and they're all available for you in 1080 as well as 4k now you're going to get all 24 of these project presets for 12 dollars, and they're going to be a one-click option that's going to set up your project settings in a particular frame rate at 1080 or 4k whatever you want so you just click it, you hit load, boom, you're done. You can move on to start working on your project. You don't have to change settings for every single project that you get into. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to load them up, where to put them, and then just how to use them in Resolve and load up one of these project preset settings. I think they'll come in handy. I mean, I use them all the time. I always have a default project preset when I jump into Resolve, so it's all ready to go. Just loads right up and it's got my frame rate, my resolution, everything I want to work in. It's all set up and I'm good to go. Hopefully you guys find these helpful, but we're going to jump into Resolve. We're going to start on a Mac and I'll cut in parts on a PC where it might be a little bit different. So whether you're on Mac or PC, you should be able to figure it out. And if you do have any problems, definitely leave a comment down below. I'll try and answer it if I can. Or you should get a, uh, a paper here that's going to break everything down for you. Tell you how to get these things load up, things to look for, uh, things you might need to adjust or change. And uh, it's going to have my email address on there too. So if you run into any problems, definitely reach out to me. If you have any feedback, shoot me an email. Let me know what you guys think or if you're having problems, whatever it might be. And we'll get you guys situated. I'll help you out. And uh, we'll make sure that everything is good to go. You're up and running and you're happy with these presets. With that said, let's jump into Resolve and see how to get these guys loaded up, what you'll get, and just how to use them here in DaVinci Resolve. So let's take a quick look at the project settings here and compare what the defaults are to what the settings are in these preset files that I made. Now, all the files are going to have the same settings other than your timeline resolution and frame rate. So let's take a look here. So in the default settings up here in the top section under master settings here, we've got your timeline format. So these are going to change based on whatever frame rate you pick for the project preset. So that's going to change for each one. Moving down to the next section, video monitoring. Now I've matched the video monitoring format with the top timeline format for each of the project presets. Moving down to the next section here, optimize media and render cache. You can see the default settings here. They are ProRes 422HQ for your proxy media format. And the optimized media format is ProRes 422HQ as well. And over in my project presets, I changed the optimized media format and render cache format to be ProRes 422LT. And just scrolling down here a little bit, if we take a look at the uh, check boxes down below, for your defaults, the background caching is at five seconds and you only have the first two options checked on here. In my project presets, I like to change that background caching to one second. That way it starts working as soon as I stop working, pretty much. And then I also checked on automatically cache transitions in user mode, as well as automatically cache composites in user mode. In case I'm in user mode there, I want them to just start caching uh, automatically. The next section is working folders. Again, if you have your default settings uh, where it comes with Resolve, the default locations, you may need to update that. I changed my locations to be on an external drive and that works out pretty good for me. The next section under color, Taking a look at the default, you can see what's checked on here. Use S-curve for contrast and use local version for new clips in timeline. And in my side over here on my presets, I checked on luminance mixer default set to zero. And I turned off the using the S-curve for contrast. This just tells Resolve which way to affect contrast when you apply contrast. Do you want to use an S-curve or do you not? And in the default here, when you have that S-curve for contrast turned on, what it's going to do is limit or prevent any clipping of your blacks or whites when you're applying contrast. So I turn that off because maybe there's some times where I do want it to clip a little. I want that, you know, white or the, the brighter parts of the image to clip a little for some reason. So I turn that off just so I can adjust it how I want. Moving down to the Fairlight section here under Audio Metering, the default settings, you can 
can see right here is tw minus 23 luffs, and that's going to be good for broadcast work. But for YouTube, what I like to do is change that to minus 14 luffs. So when I check my loudness, it will be loud enough for YouTube without exceeding their threshold. So over here on the JY preset side, we've got minus 14 luffs. So not a whole ton of changes, but enough that I don't want to go through every single project and change these each time I load up a project. All right, guys. So thank you again for your purchase. And let's get into what do you actually get with these presets? So take a look at the screen here. You're going to get a zip file. Once you go to my Shopify, you make the purchase. You're going to get a zip file that looks like this right here. So you want to go ahead and open that up and extract the, the files that are in there. So then we can go put them in the resolve directory where they need to go. And this is going to be the same whether you get it on a PC or a Mac. It's the same files. It's going to come the same way. So go ahead and unzip that and we'll jump to the next step. So once you open up the files, this is what you're going to see. We've got all our different frame rates. So it lists your frame rate as well as the resolution for the given file. So for example, 23.976 at 4K. And then we've also got 23.976 at 1080 HD. And we've got all our common frame rates here that people typically use. For me, I generally use 23.976. Other people use 24 frames per second. Uh, you know, it goes all the way up to 120 frames per second, depending on what you need for your project. So we're going to install all these so that you've got access to all of them and you can just load up whichever one you want. So once you have these files extracted, go ahead and select all the files and copy them. And now we're gonna jump into a directory where we wanna paste them in. Now don't open Resolve yet. We wanna make sure DaVinci Resolve is closed. Let's go put these where they need to go in the directory. I'm gonna show you on Mac here first and then I'll show you where it is on the PC because they're a little bit different. Uh, let's go paste them in there before we even get going to Resolve. And then once they're pasted in there, we'll open Resolve and uh, we'll see how they come up. So on the Mac, where are we gonna install them? Well, in your uh, download zip file, you're gonna get this document here, which tells you where exactly the files should be pasted on both a Windows as well as on a Mac. So we're gonna do the Mac first here. So check out this. I'm gonna go through it here on the screen with you. You wanna make sure that you are in your Macintosh HD. Go to Library, Application Support, Blackmagic Design, DaVinci Resolve, Slide on over here. We want resolve projects. Then we have users. We have guest. Moving over some more, we have configs. Now I've already pasted them in here, but this is where you're going to want to paste them. Just go ahead and paste them in that directory. And then they're going to appear in resolve for us. Now, if for some reason you don't see some of this file path, you may need to make sure that you show any hidden files. So on this sheet here, I tell you how to do that. On the Mac, you want to use shift plus command plus the period button, and that is gonna show any hidden files. So if you don't see any of these directories, definitely make sure you show the hidden files. And then you should be able to locate this directory that we just found here. Go ahead, paste the files in there, and you should be good to go. All right, let's talk about the PC. Where do these files go when you're working on a PC? Now, keep in mind, you may need to show your hidden folders. I'll pop it up on the screen here how to do that, as well as uh, it's listed in that document that you'll get when you make your purchase. So it'll spell everything out in there in case, you know, you don't want to pause the video, whatever. You could check it out there too. So jumping into the PC here, open your Windows Explorer, go to your C drive. So in my case, it's Acer C drive right here. Then you can come on over to users, then go to your username. In my case, it's Y-A-D-L-O. Then go to application data, app data, go to roaming, Blackmagic Design, DaVinci Resolve, Support, Resolve Disk Database, Resolve Projects, Users, Guest, and Configs. And this is where you want to paste it in. Control V to paste in these files that you copied previously. Dump them in this directory. And then once we open up Resolve, you should be good to go. So let's get back into seeing how to use these guys once we get into Resolve. All right, so now we got our files pasted where they need to go. Now we're ready to jump into Resolve. So go ahead and launch DaVinci Resolve and go ahead and open up. I'm gonna open a blank project. So why don't you open up a blank project and I'll show you how you can load up these project settings presets. All right, so I got my blank project open here. Now there's two ways we can access the project presets settings if we wanna load them up. The first way and the easiest is click on the little gear icon down here at the bottom right of the screen. And that's gonna bring up our project settings window. Now all you have to do is come to the top right here and this is gonna be all of our presets. We can see they're all in there. And all we have to do to load one up is select the one you want. So I'm gonna choose uh, 23.976 HD project. Select the one you want and come over here and hit load. Once you hit load, it loads it up and you're good to go. Now you can just come and hit cancel 
And now your project is set up with those settings. And it's the same on a PC or a Mac. And if you wanna check that the project settings are the same, just come back to your project settings window. Come on down to master settings. And right here, you can check your timeline resolution, your frame rate, your uh, playback video monitoring, uh, as well as some of your settings down here. Do uh, You can see what they, what they are and make sure that they're updated. If we wanna double check, let me pick a different one here. Let's do, uh, 120 frames per second, 4K. I'm going to say load that. Come to my master settings. Now you can see right here, timeline resolution is 4K. Frame rate is 120. Playback is 120. So now we know our settings were updated to reflect what we want it to be. So if I just cancel out of this, the other way that you can access the project settings is go ahead and come to file and then come on down right here to project settings. And that's going to go ahead and open up the project settings window here for you. Again, go to presets, select the one you want, load it up, and you're good to go. Now you can start working on your project. Now, one thing you may notice is that once you load up your project, you may get a few uh, notices that you might need to update some of your working file paths. So this may be different. Uh, if you have your default settings, just how they are, then you might be good to go. But if you get any of these messages that look like these right here, any one of these three messages, I'll show you how to fix that real quick. So in our project settings window, if we come to master settings, and you scroll down to working folders right here. You may need to update these three locations based on wherever you want to put them. For me, I keep them on an external hard drive, a Samsung T5. Works out great. And this way it doesn't clog up the internal drive on my computer. Now, I did list all that out in this uh, document here, the instructions document. So you should be able to follow along here and make any changes that you need to. But if you have any trouble, definitely reach out to me. Shoot me an email. Drop me a note somewhere, and I'll make sure that you can get all set up and working with these files here. All right, guys, that wraps up this video. Hopefully, you're able to get these installed. If you have any problems, definitely reach out to me. Shoot me an email. Drop a comment in this video, and I'll make sure that you get set up and everything's working good for you. Again, you're going to get those 24 files for $12 here, and I hope that you find them helpful, and it just speeds up your workflow a little bit. I use them, and I think it comes in pretty handy. All right, guys, that wraps it up. So with that said, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Peace.